Hello and welcome to another Optelec Ask the Expert. And today I'm very happy to announce I'm being joined by Susan Hoth and Stephen Payne from Vista, uh, the uh, site loss charity in Leicestershire. So welcome to you both. Hi Anne, hello Paul, it's nice to see you. Nice to see you both too. So uh, first of all, uh, as usual, I'd like you to just properly and uh, formally introduce yourselves, if you would please. Fair enough, yes. Uh, my name is Susan Hoth. I'm the Chief Exec of Vista. I've been here just over two years and I'm not used to being called an expert on anything, so I'm quite enjoying the introduction. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I'm Steve Payne. I'm Director of Care and Services. I've been at Vista for 15 years. Yeah. Um, I'm still not sure I'm an expert either, but either way, I'll, I'll give it a go. <laughs> well, you're, you're both very much so the experts, that's for sure. Yeah, we have a long, long, long and distinguished history, so uh, that's good. <laughs> so... Uh, in regards to what Vista is for, for the audience, for our viewers, could you, and I'm sure many of them are aware, but could you uh, basically go into some details of what Vista is, what it does, uh, maybe a bit of history as well? Of course, gladly. Uh, Vista is a local sight loss charity. We're an independent charity like many others, and we operate across Leicester City and Leicestershire, the county and Rutland. So LLR is our, our network of local contact. Um, we, like many other charities, come out of a well-intentioned house for the blind with a workshop and a, a front to try and raise a bit of money for people to get independence it, way, way back. We just celebrated 160 years of trying to provide some services that were slightly better than that. Um, and it, it evolved over the period to include provision of a wide range of services to the point where we now support people from well prenatal right through to end-of-life care and residential we provide children's services we link into hospital services and care for, for children as well as for adults we've got ECLOs we've got the rehab team the register we provide the statutory services in the middle of people's journeys and then we do a lot of support obviously both social and, and community support for older people including residential care for older people with sight loss those with dementia and, and people with complex needs so conception to cremation as uh, Steve tries to bracket it pretty okay. much everything in between um, a diversity that brings its challenges but also means that we can have a go at almost anything come to us with almost anything and someone somewhere we can connect you to so it, it's lovely to be able to do that breadth of everybody's journey excellent stuff so so in regards to uh uh for, for Stephen for, for your particular uh side of it uh, uh and how much does it differ and how much is it is, is it the same as uh is, is as uh, as what Susan's explained there yeah. I think I think it's it's been um, certainly looking at the last year. It's been an interesting year. I mean, our our, our services. Um, you know, we, we've got that history, which is fantastic. You know, we've got local authority contact history, which is brilliant. But we're a local charity, and we support people with a sight loss. We're not a local authority, um, and I think it's really important that we differentiate the two um, because we're, we're here for our beneficiaries and the people, not not just to serve contracts, which is again yeah. important. And that doesn't mean to say that we don't. Um, like those contracts and don't want them of course we do um our, our rehab teams our, our echoes our deaf blind teams as susan said um all gel together to give that seamless pathway for individuals coming in at diagnosis right the way through to um independence in their communities um and what a wonderful world it was pre-covid where we were all free um, yes. and we were able to do those services without any any sort of restrictions at all uh, only to almost have the doors slam shut on us um, but we didn't and um, we put a war effort in as I call it really really early and we kept going and we've kept going all the way through the pandemic and um, with a service of sorts starting with the people that I will describe as in the most need for the best way of putting it and um, so those people that actually just wanted a bit of information just to keep them going um, and that spectrum is huge on the amount of support we gave to those people from like I say from just a, a quick two minute phone call to actually still going around and doing that um, habilitation, rehabilitation, and that deafblind support. So it's been a significant journey. And that's only a, a small piece looking at our community services, if you like, with our children's services, adapting really quickly to online, on, onto the online platform very quickly. Is that easy because the younger audience sort of knew a little bit about technology and the parents were a little bit more savvy? Who knows, but it worked and is still working. Um, our community services, like I said, continued to, to go around households, which was a challenge when the government are saying households shouldn't meet. Um, and then our residential, blimey, um, that's one that we really, yeah. you know, that, that older person care, that complex needs care. Um, it just meant to me, and I described it at a CQC interview, that 
uh, COVID is a thorn in our side in an, an environment that we have to uh, excel at every day of the year, whether we've got COVID or not. Yeah. Um, I, the infection control doesn't change just because COVID comes in. That's there anyway. Uh, so, so yeah, we adapted, but it was it's been it's been challenging, but it's been successful. There's been some great stories come out of what we've done. Some great successes. You know, the the residents entertain themselves in with the activities staff, dress up days, music days, dancing days, uh, VE day celebrations, socially distanced. Uh, the ice cream man coming to visit, um, a book in the ice cream man, the, the fish and chip donations. You know, these things happened, which brought the community into us rather than just going to the community, which was fantastic. Brilliant stuff. And I, I think personally, that is something which is, it's it's not as discussed as much. I mean, the, 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 there is the feel good stories out there, but as we all know, the media loves the, uh, you know, the, the doom and gloom aspect of it. And uh, you almost don't want to switch the news on, on things. So to hear these stories, uh, especially from the from the residential home side is 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 actually really heartwarming and obviously we're all, we're all for that as well to bring in as many of these stories because there has in, in been a lot of positives in a way uh, that uh, that is coming out of this and in many ways it has brought uh, a lot of people uh, closer together so again I tip my hat to you uh, uh, on that you've been able to continue that uh, even in a more limited way but you've actually thought well no we're not going to let this get to us we're going to go out and still do that so that's and that's, and, that's and people who work in care don't stop caring just because there's some bad headlines we've had to adapt the way we care but but it's it, it's absolutely undeniable that that our frontline staff our volunteers our families our our carers have just thrown themselves into okay so, how, so what can we do and how do we keep that going and how do we connect with other on the ground organizations to make sure that somebody is supported and supporting you how do we make sure that we adapt our behavior to keep you safe how do we make sure that we we adjust that now that's that's made a whole range of different things it's certainly pushed us to the limit of our commitment to be flexible around your needs rather than our template um, and we always said we would do that, but blimey, if we had to test that to its limit in terms of um, there's going to be a six foot bloke on the door and, and he is perfectly safe. He is one of ours. You don't have to let him in, but he's legitimately there to see you um, right through to actually, no, we can't come around your house, even though you want us to, because it's not safe for you or for us. And, and trying to cater for everything in, in the middle has, has made us it's made us for it's forced us to be more flexible it's forced us to think more laterally about about how we meet people's needs now that's ultimately what we always wanted to do it's what we've always tried to do yeah. but it has really pushed us to the to, to the art of the possible in a way that we when we get to relax and step back from it a bit you think actually that was amazing we didn't necessarily have done that by choice but look at what we did and and yeah. now that the pressure is starting to ease just a little she said touching wood because i don't want <laughs> to jinx it we can just that little bit start to say actually most of that worked and that didn't all work we tried some things we just grabbed in the moment and afterwards you think oh I've wasted so much time and effort but we tried um but we can learn from all of that and say actually what were the best bits of that what were the bits that that there weren't any barriers there weren't any reasons not to when we really pushed ourselves and, and the people we support of course we can we just need to find a way of making it happen and that's where the magic will come I think that's where the longevity of this will come it's that lasting legacy of it's okay to be flexible and it comes back again to what Steve was saying earlier about and we're not a council we're not a hospital we're not no. a, a GP practice we can be flexible we're a charity so we can look at actually what solutions do you really need in place to support you and that we've kind of come into our niche a little on that one I think if we've got the element of admitting it and being brave enough to admit it no uh, exactly and and uh, like like you it's 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 important to the, the 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 pluses that have come out of this and the the ways that we've all been forced to change our business and our work ethics and how we do things uh, a lot of things will continue even when we are allowed out to play properly again because like you said they work we found out be in a way being forced them that these sort of te techniques and ideas work and uh, even for the point of, uh, uh, you know, some of the group talks, uh, if you can get 50, 60 people uh, on a call or a Zoom or whatever, mm -hmm. that's certainly more than you would maybe get on a on a, the old fashioned walk in days. When yep. thinking, well, well, the weather's a little bit new today, so I'm not going to bother uh, traveling into the city centre to to go to uh, the, the the meeting. I'll, yeah. I'll do it from home, and so yeah, absolutely. The, you know, there's a lot of things, a lot of positives you can take on there. So, yeah. 
in regards to uh again moving forward and things that you have been doing and things that you are planning to do uh maybe you can give us a little bit of idea with uh, uh fundraisers or uh events and uh, and things like that uh, that you've that you've got planned that you may want to share or, or you may not want to share them it's <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think like any other charity, we've had to completely rethink the way we do community fundraising because that, yeah. that's the biggest element of change. We also have a, a small chain, I suppose, technically of charity shops that we've had to completely rethink as well in terms of how do we keep them? Because like most of, um, of your viewers, I suspect anybody who has or has been in charity shops, they're the little ones on the end that nobody else wanted. That's why it's, it's available for us and we can afford it. Um, and those little shops don't make for uh, isolating your stock one person at a time, keeping it ventilated. It's the logistics are, are a challenge um so our shops have been shut for a lot of the year they're now starting to reopen with with some tweaks but we're trying to get those going again to get that footfall to get that awareness as well as the the income stream obviously the the, the community events the big um public events that we'd have been at the running the charity events the park the parties and stuff we've had to have been all of that over the year we've done some of it virtually we had a fantastic completely virtual balloon race which was great fun um, using real weather data and Google Maps, but, uh, but artificial false balloons. So you booked your balloon and it tracked your balloon and how, whose balloon went first. Oh, right. It was brilliant okay. to do virtually. Okay. We'll do that again, because that was great yeah. fun. Um, and we've done everybody walking their own journey and doing their own challenges remotely and, and coming together to do that. That's, that's been hard. Um, but it's given us an opportunity to engage, as you said, in the same way as with, with delivering a service. People who wouldn't otherwise have been involved with this have been able to do it, because they can do it wherever they are, rather than having to come to us to do it it doesn't replace it. So we're yeah. trying to do more um, on a very much on a much more local footing, get in involved in local communities, what's going on in this community. How do we make this a part of what you're doing locally? How do we play into that rather than making people come to us? How do we come to you? Um, and we're looking at how do we rebadge some of what we do? How do we look and look at and talk about what we do in a slightly different way to appeal to funders? It's a very competitive market out there. Funders want a hit for their money. Uh, for the last 12 months, they've only wanted to fund anything to do with COVID, regardless of all the other stuff that you might have needed to do, because yes. of course nobody needed anything other than COVID support for the last year. So, so and, and still trying to re-educate ourselves and our funders and the language you use with funders about how do we say, actually, we've all learned about social isolation. These are issues we were talking about beforehand. Now everyone's had a tiny taste of that, even if you were just inconvenienced because Waitrose wouldn't come to you and you had to order, at least everyone's experienced something that we can now build on and say, actually, just imagine what that's like if that's enforced and it's every day of your life. And it's, so it's changing our language a little, I think, in terms of how we talk to funders as well. So it, it's... it's yeah, that's uh, that's learn. very important, actually. That, that's something that's be very rarely been raised on any of our previous videos. About... I'm grateful for the COVID funding, yeah. don't get me wrong. Yeah. But other things were also going on. Nothing stopped. No, exactly. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about in particular is everybody has, in a way, now experienced what a lot of people who, are, who, who have sight loss, who are restricted... 24 7 365 days a year we've also yeah we've all kind of ex started to experience that issue now of like yeah I, I don't go out anymore because exactly. of abc we've and we've if, all been in that so yeah and even a thought first hand even if you know key workers and stuff who and, and again we've got a huge swathe of them ourselves we've kept services running people who've had to go out and keep working through yeah. even even if you've been in that situation yourself you're you've got neighbors you've got family members that you haven't seen and that you care about and that you know in that have experienced so everybody that issue's been brought much closer i think for everybody in terms of what it means to not be able to go out and do things for yourself and, and to have those barriers to independence put in, in your way. And, and I think there's a, a message for all of us in that that says, how do we tackle that? How do we remove those barriers? But also how do we make everything slightly more accessible because it would have made it easier for everybody and it would make it easier for everybody. It doesn't take it away from anyone. Yeah. So there's a conversation there as well. Yeah. In terms okay. of fundraising, just I'll take any money anybody's got. We <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, sorry, that's, Steve, that's, go ahead. I think importantly as well, uh, it's just reiterating what Susan said there is um, it would have been easy for uh, for, for organisations to, to, to shut down services yeah. and that's not just frontline services and um, this is back office stuff too and and fundraisers in a lot of places disappeared first to go on furlough actually we recognised that we needed that team more than anything now and yeah. um, this is not not about just the Covid grants that local authorities and and other funders were giving this was about actually what's available in the community how how's the community going to join with us 
um, to, to, to enable us to, to get items, small ticket items, like gifts in kind items that make such a difference to the people yeah. we support. Um, I can only couple it with residential. Right back at the beginning of COVID, PPE was, was like hen's teeth. You, know? and, and you couldn't get hold of it for love and money in some places. And, and it's like saying that the, the government were giving free this, free that, but it wasn't there. It, no. it was failing. Um, but the community come together and, and with our fundraising team come together uh, and we, ex I say exploited that. We made the best of what was available to us yeah. and the community recognised our need. Yeah. So our, our, our partnerships didn't wane at all through, through any of this. And, and I think that was critical to how we succeeded in some parts of what we were doing. Yeah. Um, because now our services wouldn't have stopped if we didn't get that piece of equipment from the co-op or it wouldn't have stopped because we didn't get cakes from the, the local bakery. No, it wouldn't. But actually, do you know what? They make a massive difference yeah. um, in, in terms of what you're going through because it, what it is is a, a distractor from yes. actually the COVID world that was happening. And, and it brought you back to that little bit of normality and a little bit of reality. And yeah. so, so, so our fundraising efforts through the past year, I mean, they, they work hard, fundraisers do, um, but their, their fundraising effort through the past year um, has really sort of gelled together because we, we've we always known there's an interdependence between services and fundraising. We don't exist without each other. Um, no, our, our knowledge influences their bid writing, their bid writing influences our knowledge. So, so it's it, it, it was critical. And I think the, the last year going forward, um, has shown in my 15 years how important it is that that interdependence isn't lost um, and, to gel, and to gel that a little bit closer together. So, so moving forward, that's, that's something that we're always a learning and sharing organisation anyway, but um, that an internal learning yeah. has definitely been, been that. Yeah, really no, ab yeah that, absolutely. That small ticket thing actually is crucial because uh, small things, and it is small things, so local businesses right back at the start that were closing up because of everything was closing up, who rang us and said, actually, do you want the contents of our cleaning cupboard? Now that's not a huge thing, but that's a significant relationship thing that proves that you've got a connection to somebody. It proves that they care and understand enough about what you do and the pressures you're under to, to want to help. So, so that, and that was massively reassuring. And, and when we were going through that first period of crisis, like goodness knows what we're gonna do with this, just to know that, that that network of local businesses were available and were still thinking about how they could support local charities gives you some faith in society and in your, your local communities as well, doesn't it? So it, that was massively powerful, actually. It's a good point. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It showed that you, you, were, you were on their mind and that's, that's yeah. from a charity point of view, that's, that's exactly what you're, you're looking for on that one. Exactly. So that's, that's brilliant. Yeah. So, so obviously, and again, you, you, you both uh, mentioned like, you know, this is what you're hoping to do. So for the future wise, once that we are uh, able to, as I said, to get out, uh, a lot of the things that you have been doing, you're going to actually clean, you're going to continue to do them and in, in, in incorporate this, I hate using this term, but it seems to be the only one that's out there, the, the new norm. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the new norm. Uh, but... Uh, Clearly, a lot of it is is actually beneficial and very positive on that side. So I'm guessing, you know, you are, you are going to do the same. You're going to carry on some of the ideas and concepts that you've started in the last 12 months and let them run in the future. I'm always conscious that um, I don't take a staff member on called Norman because anybody being called <laughs> New Norm is never going to be good. Um, so we have to be... <laughs> oh, <stop laughs> Here's the new norm. There he is. Um, <laughs> But, but yeah, I think from, from my side, yeah, there's been lots of learning, absolutely lots of learning. Um, I think what also has been important for, for us is, I mentioned partnerships a minute ago, just from the community, but our partnerships in the sector, yeah. um, our natural partnerships have, have not stopped either. In fact, they've grown too, because I think we've needed each other just as much. Um, yeah. You know, things like this for a start, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it just, it's, it's just one thing to mention amongst our visionary, um, partners who who yeah. they put things on and we all contribute to and, and there's been more of that so going forward yeah I don't have to jump on a train and travel to London to get the best out of a meeting and I've, I've learned that massively in the last 12 months mm -hmm. is that do you know what it saved the charity money which is important and um, of course it is but I've still got probably the same outcome so moving forward again that's that's really important for us yeah. yeah, and it and also I, means you don't have to get dressed in the morning either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only the top bit. The top bit. 
yeah. it's the old, it's the old, the new, the news one from years ago. And again, show my age is what uh, I don't know if it was uh, not the nine o'clock news where he's got his shirt and tie on. He's reading the news, yeah. and of course, if the news broadcast finished, and he gets up and he's he's in his boxer yeah. shorts. That's it, absolutely. And there's, we're sitting down for a reason, Paul, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah let's, not, let's not go there with the bottom half, OK? <laughs> but it, and uh, it, it does. It's also opened up, um, I think, a, a genuine and, and really productive conversation about what works best at a national level, what works best at a local level, and how do we get the best out of both, rather than trying to compete so again, quite early on, conversations with partners in, in the RNIB, in guide dogs, in blind vets say, actually, you do what you're doing really well, or we'll do what we're doing, and let's try not to duplicate because we've all got limited resource, masses of, of need out there. So where the uh, RNIB is starting up a, an online group or a club, let's not do that. Let's do something mm. else and fill another gap instead of us all trying to fill the same gap. And, and it's something that those of us who've worked in the sector for a while will know. We've always said we would try to do. But again, this gave us a catalyst for that, that we've all learned from and been able to say, actually, it works better when we coordinate. I know it sounds like a surprise. Yeah. Um, but just to demonstrate that now, I would not have chosen this as a as a, as a method for change management, but blindly we've learned and, and yeah. to lose some of that learning would, would be a real shame. Um, and in terms of how we're planning ahead for what do services look like in future, it's really useful to be able to say, and what would that have meant? If we were working like that, what would we have done if another COVID hit? What would we have done if COVID hit? Does it make us more resilient? Does it make us more flexible? Does it make it easier for us to adapt? Because of course we, we don't want to go through that pain and trauma again, no matter what the next crisis is, we want to learn from that. Because I, I don't know anybody whose business continuity plan said this 12 month lockdown needs to be in your horizon. It, it just never was for anybody, was it? No. No, no, exactly, exactly, exactly. No, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we're all, uh, we're going to be, uh, in a, certainly in a better place, uh, yeah. uh, in, in the next six months onwards uh, on that side. But uh, no, that's great. So, is a, is a, well, it, to, to kind of finish off, is, a, is, is there anything else that you'd like uh, uh, to share uh, with, uh, with our viewers, or have we pretty much covered it all? Uh, I've got a quick thing and Susan will probably pick on two okay. and, and, and I know Susan's probably got something else that she could say but I think that something that can't be forgotten we, we talked about it earlier it was, is, is the people um, yes. and this is about the people within our own organisation it has, hasn't been easy when your finance are working at home and your HR are working at home and, and everyone else is working wherever that, that's not been easy um, but again we've had to adapt to that and to see how it works the office has been open on a skeleton stroke just about regulatory, you know, we can't break any rules type of thing um, because certain things need to happen. But um, keeping our people together, it's been a challenge. Um, but I think our communications in how we've done that, Susan's part in bringing the organisation together with yeah. Talking Tuesdays on Teams, so teams yeah. knew they could go and have a talk that day. Yeah. Um, our, our teams chats through Teams um, and, and so on has been, has been really important to keep us together. And it's... You, you're right, and I'm not going to use new norm because new norm's overused, but <laughs> that, that, norm, that normality, you know, the office is starting to open up now and people are starting to, to come back safely. Um, and it's great to see people, but it's also great to know that now our business continuity plan didn't say you're going to get COVID for 12 months, but what it did say is that you can be resilient when something like that happens. And lots of our BCP came into play. Yeah. Um, and yes, it had to be adapted massively. <laughs> And has had to be adapted for the future because God knows if it happens again. But actually, it showed us as an organisation. It showed me as an organisation. As an organisation, I think I say as it showed me that actually we were a resilient bunch. And um, Lest Leicester didn't come out of lockdown until step yeah. two, just recently. We've not been out of lockdown, so yeah. that yeah. presented as another challenge. And I think as a as a business, as a charity, um, we've we've been we've we've been able to keep going, which is is. is if you're looking for successes, there's one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And actually, it's a good point. The the second lockdown nationally was a relief for us. It was less control than Leicester had been experiencing. So so yes, there was there's always the Leicester factor, which I don't think we'll ever quite forget. Um and it, Yes, you were singled out rather, weren't you? Absolutely, it's because we're special, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and then Manchester made a big thing of it when it happened to them. No, get on with it. Just sort of. Yeah, we've, we've, uh, been so, there, we've been there. We've done that. <laughs> Old news. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it also, it really hammered home. And I think it's still really relevant that we've got people who aren't ready. They're not ready to come back. 
They're not ready to come back to the office. They're working their socks off. I've got no problems at all about that. But they're not ready to start traveling back on the bus or come back into an office or walk through the town. Yeah. They're not ready. And and we don't have to force them. It, it, again, we're a charity. Uh, we can be flexible. We can support people who are in all sorts of different situations. And that's kind of been the thread throughout, really. And I think... And people ask, ask, you know, Chief Exec, what's the challenge? And throughout the challenge has been to lead people in so many different situations at the same time. When you've got a, a genuine short, sharp crisis, everybody rallies around, that's fine. And then you all go, geez, and then you get back on with whatever you're supposed to be doing. But we haven't had that. We've had this persistence of people who were on the front line, who kept turning up for work, regardless of their home circumstances and, and the fear, particularly at the beginning, when we did not know what this was. Uh, and and almost you know wrapping staff entirely in plastic to do a job that relies on hand holding and and contact and 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 a physical um, bonding with with people they're supporting, right through to people that we had to furlough and say I know you want to do your job and I know you you're passionate about what you do but we need you to stay out the way for a bit, um, and the the struggle because they wanted to work we had people we needed them to work and they weren't happy about it we had people coping with homeschooling and thinking it was brilliant people with homeschooling thinking it was terrible people saying I can't do my job. I I, I can't, everything between yeah. the, the, trying to keep that whole team engaged and focused on this is the purpose and this is the crisis has been such a challenge and not just for me as chief exec but for every team manager for every service for every department to try and keep everybody going yeah. over such a long period of time has been really difficult and and we've tried our best but we've not got it all right all the time I've done as much apologizing as I have praising I think because we're all reacting um, but the listening has been the, the thing, I think, and giving everybody the time to say, this is where I'm at and this is yeah. what I'm trying to do. And I think doing that has given everybody an opportunity to share their problems and then for us to look for solutions in the same way as we have for the people who support us, as, that we need to support, to support as beneficiaries, to exactly the same way and say, OK, so I want you to do your job. You want to do your job. What do we have to put in place to help you to make it work? And so that again, that wherever we can within whatever constraints we can flex to try and, and, and cope with people and support them to to work with us and for us as well again I'd like to keep as much of that as we can it makes it a nightmare for the HR team they the, the, the data and, and who's in today and what knows going on is harder but if we can keep some of the magic of that because I think that is a genuine thing that as a charity we should be able to do we should be able to say actually how do we support you to be the best person you can when you're working for us just as much as we do if we come to support you in your home with your independence so it, if we can keep that as well then we've definitely won something absolutely no I'd uh, yeah very well said and something that which uh, I think a lot of people will have a a, a lot of uh, commonality and uh, agree with I, I call it juggling jelly it's uh, yeah, exactly. you know it, it is uh, only this jelly is covered in ice cream and it's uh, yes. but you know it's uh, I like jelly I like ice cream so it's yeah, not necessarily airborne no <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> Oh well, guys. Listen, I uh, I really appreciate your time today, both of you. Uh, it's uh, it's been, it's been, really, it's been really good to uh, to catch up again, and hopefully we can uh, we can do this in a future face to face. Uh, uh, not necessarily with the cameras in the background, but you know, uh, just a general meeting face to face. Uh, and as always, uh, we we will put all the relevant information uh, within the links, yep. and uh, we'll do that, and uh, we'll also let you know when uh, when this goes out. But again, guys, uh, if uh, if if there's nothing else uh, for either to say again i'd just like to very thank you thank you both for your time you're very welcome i should just flag again as steve says we're committed to being a learning and sharing organization if anybody wants to follow up with us on anything we've, they've heard or has got a better idea then please do get in touch we'd be happy to chat to anybody about this this is part of what we do so. brilliant stuff thanks for lovely to see you thanks That's both fantastic. brilliant thank you bye. okay take care bye Cheers, bye bye, bye. bye.